Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene thinks Medicare is socialism and that uh, it's bad. His big socialist programs were the Great Society. The Great Society were big government programs to address education, medical care, urban problems, rural poverty, transportation, Medicare, Medicaid, food stamps, and welfare the Office of Economic Opportunity, and big labor and labor unions. Now, LBJ had the Great Society, but Joe Biden had Build Back Better, and he still is working on it. The largest public investment in social infrastructure and environmental programs that is actually finishing what FDR started, that LBJ expanded on, and Joe Biden is attempting to complete. Socialism. Mm, socialism, because of course, right? Everything, everything is socialism. Everything the government does, somehow socialism. Villains in Venezuela. Venezuela, social, all the same thing. Communism, same thing, same thing to Marjorie Taylor Greene. Let me just note um, that I once again have to explain to a idiot uh, what socialism is. I wish I didn't have to do so, but uh, words apparently have no meaning. Uh, socialism is not when the government does things. Socialism is when workers own the means of production. That's really all socialism is. She's thinking of social welfare programs. She's thinking of a welfare state. And by the way, you can be a capitalist country and have a welfare state. What do you think a lot of the, so, you know, uh, uh, social democratic countries in Europe do. They have capitalism with a very generous, far more generous than the United States, welfare state, where they guarantee health care to every person, where they guarantee an education to everyone. And, and not, not just a K through 12, but also, uh, you know, a higher education for everybody. That, but that's not socialism. Socialism is workers owning the means of production, workers owning the factories, owning the corporation, the companies. That's what that is. But for them, socialism is, uh, you know, you know uh, everything is, uh, government does, does everything. Right. Okay, sure. Uh, all right. So now, look, Marjorie Green calling these welfare state programs socialism. Uh, 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 but of course, again... Uh, that's what they call anything that the government does. That's it. Uh, now, when she comes to uh, other things, right? Like, uh, I, I don't know, national debt. Well, 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 we've got a national debt that's 30, $32 trillion. We've got record high homelessness. Uh, we've got uh, inflation. Uh, we're losing. The, you know, a lot of that uh, comes down to uh, corporate greed, corruption. Yes, I know. Our government is one big, flat, bloated machine that's killing the American dream. Yeah, it's corruption. <laughs> that's the result of that. That's the result. So look, the biggest driver of the national debt today is tax cuts for the rich and corporations. That's the driver of the national debt. That's why we do not have, you know, uh, or I'm sorry, that's why we have a lot of Debt. We're, we're not raising enough revenue to cover things because, again, corporations and the rich got massive tax cuts, not only from George W. Bush, but then Donald Trump. And, and look, not only that, but of the money we take in, we also give a lot to corporations in the form of, I don't know, uh, corporate welfare. For example, the billions of dollars in subsidies to big oil that we get every single year. And let's not forget the ever-expanding Pentagon budget, the war budget that both Republicans and Democrats, they shovel money into. We have a near, near trillion dollar every year going towards the defense budget, which, by the way, there never seems to be any issue with any of that unless uh, it's money going to Ukraine, which now Republicans are like, ah, oh, oh, money going to Ukraine, who hate it. I mean, we love all the defense contractors getting all this uh, money, but uh, you know how uh, Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. Now, look, I'm not saying you can't legitimately ask, 
hey, look, um, why are we spending so much money arming other countries when we've got issues at home? And that's, by the way, that's a fair question. That's a legitimate question. That's a good conversation to have. Yes, absolutely. Now, is Green having that conversation? Absolutely not. In fact, in another um, part of her speech, she says, the war in Ukraine does nothing to protect our borders. And that's with your hard-earned tax dollars. We're funding them uh, with equipment. We're funding them with ammunition. Biden's war in Ukraine, a proxy war with Russia, has depleted our military. Our military is the weakest it has been in decades and decades. Wait a minute. How, how's it Biden's war in Ukraine when Russia was the one that invaded Ukraine and started the whole thing in the first place? Oh, look, I'm not saying the United States couldn't be pressing a little bit harder for Russia to get into peace talks. Sure, sure. Uh, but here's the thing. How is this war, which Ukraine is fighting with Russia, how's it depleting our military? How, how is that depleting our military? How, how, what, how does that make any sense? Well, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It, it's insane. No, what this is doing, by the way, the war in Ukraine uh, and all this military aid, it's really uh, making defense contractors very, very wealthy. The same kinds of defense contractors that Marjorie Greene is financially invested in. And that's, and again, they're getting fat off our tax money. That is a real problem here. Okay, that, that is the real problem. And look, uh, back in May, 60 Minutes did a, a really, really good interview with Shea Asad, uh, who is a former executive vice president and top contract negotiator for defense contractor Raytheon and a former top Pentagon contract negotiator under several presidential administrations. Here's what he said. He revealed massive amounts of price gouging that these uh, contractors engage in when it comes to selling weapons to the United States government. Government, of course, buys these weapons, gives them to Ukraine. Um, at least that's what they're doing now. Before, they would buy the weapons and just uh, use them or let them sit and rot in the field, all this stuff. So now, during his time at the Pentagon, Assad reviewed uh, prices for many products, sometimes ordering official reviews for the cost of some weapons. In nearly all the cases, Assad said, the government was paying far more than the product was actually worth in other markets or was worth in the past, with some things costing multiple times what they are actually worth, often costing the government hundreds of millions of dollars for one product. He said, quote, in the interview, the gouging that takes place is unconscionable. It's unconscionable. So well, that seems to be where a lot of our money is going uh, to defense contractors who are price gouging us. Now, does Marjorie Taylor Greene talk about that? Is she, is she angry at the defense contractors for gouging the taxpayer, the American public? No. No, of course not. No. What? What Marjorie Greene is over here complaining about is the non-existent socialism while ignoring the Pentagon budget and the price gouging because, look, at the end of the day, she ignores all the real problems, or I should say the real causes of these problems that she complains about, uh, and then tries to do the opposite of what's actually good. For example, the stuff that she uh, talked about with LBJ. All that stuff, good stuff. Uh, and in fact, progressives want to, I don't know, uh, do more. <laughs> uh, expand Medicare. I know, expand Social Security. Do things that help people, that give people health care, that, that help people with child care. All this, these nice things. Marjorie Taylor Greene does not want you to give, uh, or I'm sorry, does not want you to have nice things. She does not want the government to give you nice things. She wants all of that stuff to uh, go to her donors. That's it. That's it. Uh, now, again, when it comes to um, Ukraine, it's obvious that Marjorie Taylor Greene is on the side of the Russians. And it's not just her. It's the vast majority of the right wing right now. Uh, and the reason is they want us to be more like Russia. I'm going to give you an example here. Russia just banned gender transition for everyone, uh, transgender youth and transgender adults. Well, I'm sorry, uh, they didn't just ban it. Um, it actually passed the Duma 
and then has to go through another house and then gets to Putin. And then he's very likely to sign it, which again will ban transgender people effectively from existing in Russia. Hmm. So uh, that's what, uh, it's kind of what Republicans want to do here. Oh, not only that, but uh, last year, uh, Russia had banned any public expression or portrayal of just being LGBTQ+. So that's what the right wing in Russia, who has control, that's what they did. And that sounds a lot like what the right wing here in the United States also wants to do. Now, the MAGA chugs love that. They do. Oh, they love it. Uh, great. Yeah, go on, man, ban the transgender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though it's not popular with the vast majority of the American people. Another thing, though, that's not going to be popular with the MAGA chugs is uh, going after Medicare. Calling that socialism and basically saying, ah, I want to get rid of it. Because that's what Joe Biden's trying to expand the socialism in our country. By the way, it was something that you really, really like and benefit from, which is Medicare and Medicaid. It's food stamps. Food stamps that are used on commissaries, by the way. So, look, I'm, I'm again, Medicare, very popular, all across the political spectrum. The right has been, uh, you know, a- attacking that. And by the right, I mean big business, big corporations, very, very wealthy people have been attacking Medicare as socialism since its inception. And yet, and yet, Medicare is still more popular than it ever has been. It's got over 80% support. I, I mean, yeah, okay, just, just keep keep openly attacking Medicare. And by the way, add in Social Security too. Attack that, Marjorie Green. Trust me, it'll do great. It'll do wonderfully in polls. But uh, finally, let's get to the idea that uh, President Biden is a socialist. That he's trying to continue LBJ socialism. That's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Y'all remember when uh, Joe Biden broke the rail strike, right? I remember. Uh, I was kind of pissed. Uh, as we all should be. Because uh, that was a huge Ronald Reagan-esque moment. Because Reagan had, uh, of course, broken the air unions. Uh, the air traffic controllers. And, and so now, um, people who, again, work on the rails who have been uh, just, look, we've had train derailments, or train derailments, we had safety issues with these trains, we've had uh, trains carrying toxic materials. Plus, you have workers that don't get any paid time off. They don't get any sick days. You know, uh, and and very, very punishing schedules because these companies want to downsize to as very, very few engineers as they could put on these cars while making these rail cars that much bigger. And when they tried to strike, the Biden administration broke it. Doesn't sound very socialist to me, okay? I mean, just saying, uh, more akin to Ronald Reagan than LBJ or FDR, okay, on those issues. But look, here's the thing. I wish President Biden were, I I wish he was the lefty that uh, right-wingers fear monger about. The truth is, we don't really have socialism in this country. And it's because both Democrats and Republicans are united against it. We're a capitalist com- uh, country, says, uh, you know, uh, former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. And they're against it because the donors, the corporate donors, which do donate to both sides, by the way, they would lose out if workers ever gained that kind of power. Now, look, uh, Marjorie Greene is not only one of the dumbest Congress people in power, but she's also some of the, one of the most useful idiots in uh, helping uh, corporations uh, to continue to gouge us uh, and steal from us all. 